Lord of summer, sunshine, and autumn harvest, be with us this day as we gather to encounter your word and your way for us. Remind us that we can place our trust in your eternal love. Enable us to be more effective in our witness to that love by word and deed. Guide our steps and pick us up when we falter. Dust us off and place us on the pathways of grace and service. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather as a community of compassion and hope. Care for each other tenderly and willingly. By this caring and sharing, we will be known as followers of Jesus. By our example, others may be led to the lives of Jesus. Lord, open our hearts and minds this day to your word. Let us to serve you with all our gifts and talents. Let us worship God. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them spring. Fresh from the word, sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first frost. Praise for the sweetness of the wet god. Sprung in completeness where God's feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, Eden's the place. Praise with elation, praise every morning. God's recreation of the new Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of love and mercy, be with us this day. We have faltered in our service to you. We create divisions between various people. We judge before we listen. We condemn before we make any attempt to understand. Our lives are in turmoil, and we confess that we have turned away from you. It is fear and anger that too often surrounds us, and our actions become based on those fears and anger. Slow us down, Lord. Give us hearts overflowing with grace and compassion. Help us to mirror Jesus, who loved and healed others who were rejected by polite society. Remind us that we are called to be strong voices of hope for those who feel alienated and lost. We are called to be a home to strangers, to quench thirst and to give nourishment, to welcome and bring words of hope. Forgive us when we have forgotten these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Christ's 
Christ calls each of us into lives of service and hope. He equips us for these ministries and places, us on the pathways of peace. Rejoice, you are called by God's Son and blessed by him. Amen. Hi. Uh, can you hear me, boys and girls? Good. Okay, great. Well, this looks very different, doesn't it, for church? But we are at church, and I want to tell you about a mission opportunity uh, in Mrs. Galen's newsletter for August, this yellow paper on the back where the little paw prints are. That's where she talks about um, a new mission opportunity for joyful rescues. And um, we want you to purchase at the store uh, dog or cat treats that are soft and chewy. Uh, and we want you to donate them and put them in the bin that's by the north door. And right now you see Mrs. Fargo. She has a surprise to show you. And she's going to tell you what she does at Joyful Rescues. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Lucy. Lucy is a rescue dog. So she's coming to live with the Fargos for a little while. And I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how Lucy became to come to Joyful Rescues, as it's one of our missions. So Lucy used to live in a place called Grundy, Virginia, a very poor area of the country. Um, not a lot of people know, can afford to feed their dogs or get them proper vet care, so they often place them at the local shelter. Well, there's so much poverty in that area of the country that this shelter quickly becomes overwhelmed, and they, they run out of space for their dogs. So Joyful, among other rescues in the local area, will raise money to do what we call a transport, and during a transport, we load about 20 to 30 dogs onto a truck and we bring them up to uh, Joyful Rescues, which is located in Cuba, New York. And we try to find homes for them. We give them vet care, we feed them, we love them, and we also find them homes. So Lucy is one of those dogs. She's been up in New York for about two months now. Um, and we are in the, the need of a, uh, for a new dog. So we went down, Mr. Fargo and I went down yesterday to pick her up and we were very excited to have her with us. Um, and we hope that uh, she has a permanent home with our family, but if that doesn't work out, she will have a permanent home somewhere. So it's just a wonderful organization and I've been active in it for several years and we're so happy and blessed that our church is gonna help us with some treat collections. Thank you, Mrs. Fargo. Um, so boys and girls and moms and dads and everybody at church who loves pets and cares for animals, this is an opportunity for you to share. Um, let's remember that in the Bible, it says that God created all of the creatures of the world. He created the livestock and the creeping things and beasts, that includes dogs and cats. And God saw them and said, it is good. So isn't Lucy a lucky dog? She gets to go home and be with the Fargo family. And you can help by buying a treat for the dogs and cats that are at, um, yep, here's a couple of them. These are the ones for kitty cats. Whoops. 
and those are the ones for dogs. And also, you can look on their website, Joyful Rescues, and they also suggest special toys made by Kong, K-O-N-G. I guess those are very strong and sturdy. They don't fall apart easily. And <laughs> inside, they have a squeaker. So I can imagine that Lucy will love and enjoy play, playing with those as well as the animals that are there. So let's remember that God loves our pets. And in Psalms, it says, the Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. Let us pray. Loving Lord, help us to remember that you created all the creatures of the earth, people and animals. Animals love us unconditionally and show us great love and they bring great love to our families. You help us and dear Lord, we want you uh, to know that and you want us to take care of them, amen. I will be reading from Psalm 105. This is uh, verses 1 through 5, and I'm reading out of the Cherak Bible. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. 
Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. And this is with Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for me, for my sake, will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Next hymn is Here I Am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will hear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you the Lord of snow and rain. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. the Lord of wind and flame. I will tend the poor and the lame. I will set a feast for them, 
my hand will save. I must bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Good morning. Our lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21, and they read as follows. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in good. Showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought, excuse me, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing so, you will weep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And the people all said together, Amen. Excuse me for just a moment. As I was driving in this morning, I thought of the late Sandy F. Ray, who described his preaching style as preaching from the right lane. Now, Sandy Ray said that he preached from the right lane because that is where the exits are. Now, forgive me this morning, because my words kind of meander down the road. But I believe and I pray that we will all reach an appropriate destination together. When I submitted a title for this message, Spiritual Discipline, I did not expect to come across the following statement from Dr. Esau McCauley. Dr. McCauley is an assistant professor of New Testament at Wheaton College. And he writes, and I paraphrase, as a biblical scholar, I interpret the Bible. As a Christian, the Bible is interpreting me. Now, I had in mind an outline for a sermon on spiritual discipline, and I ran into this statement from a New Testament professor that I figured I ought to share with you. Dr. McCauley says, as a biblical scholar, I interpret the Bible. As a Christian, the Bible interprets me. Dr. McCauley's words suggest that the next time you look at a Bible, consider that the Bible is looking back at you.
but nor did I expect when I submitted my title, Spiritual Discipline, as a theme, theme, I didn't expect that the nation would be attempting to reckon with Jacob Blake being shot seven times in the back by a policeman in front of his children. Adding to what I did not expect when I was preparing for this Sunday morning, I didn't expect to learn that two people were shot in Kenosha, Wisconsin. They were killed by a 17-year-old named Kyle walking around with a semi-automatic rifle. And that Kyle was carried across state lines by his mother, who was also seen in Kenosha, Wisconsin, with a semi-automatic rifle. I did not expect that Kyle would be seen by the police after he murdered two people, but still have a chance to be driven back across state lines by his mother to their home in Illinois. And if all that was not enough, I did not expect to pause my sermon preparations on Thursday afternoon and discover on Friday that Thursday brought the death of Sergeant Damian Lamar Daniels, a black man at the hands of the San Antonio, Texas police. They were called for a mental health intervention and killed Sergeant Daniels. You see, the experience of Jacob Blake this week haunts me. It haunts all African Americans. Seven bullets fired into the back of anyone ought to haunt everyone. You see, the seven bullets piercing the back of Jacob Blake are barely a fraction of what pierces African American bodies and African American souls on an almost daily basis in all kinds of situations. Yet, we hold our heads up high. But I gotta tell you, I have to admit that sometimes I feel like the prophet Jeremiah who said, oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. Maybe during the course of this week, you saw the news coverage of basketball coach Doc Rivers of the Los Angeles Clippers. He was on television crying and he said, we have loved this country, but this country has not loved us back. Maybe in the television news, you saw New York Mets first baseman Dom Smith in tears say, being a black man in America is not easy. People seem not to care. But we read in the Bible how during the Babylonian captivity, the psalmist asked, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? In another place, the prophet Jeremiah asked, is there no balm in Gilead? But you got to know that faith for everyone lives on the hope that there is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Faith for everyone lives in a strange land and maintains a hope to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The anthropologist and author, Zora Neale Hurston, penned this line. They seemed to be staring in the dark, but their eyes were watching God. Now, I've already confessed that this message meanders this morning, but this meandering is with the intention and the prayer that you will choose the disciplines the Apostle Paul advises in this letter to the Romans. My prayer is that by God's spirit, you will discover the spiritual freedom that comes with these spiritual dis disciplines. One of my mantras as I sought and continue to seek to guide my children so they can grow and lead productive lives is that just about everything is practice. I remind them that Albert Einstein said, it's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with problems longer. A close friend, an endocrinologist, a retired endocrinologist, ran a research laboratory. He told me the first thing he said to graduate students who came to work in his laboratory that they should get used to doing experiments over and over until 
that get them right. You see, God rewards discipline. God rewards steadfast faith. God rewards disciplined inquiry. Disciplined scientific inquiry has led to discoveries about how God stitched creation together. Giant telescopes peer into space and powerful microscopes search out the tiniest of particles to study their behavior. Disciplined inquiry has shown us that calcium produces strong bones. Disciplined inquiry has shown us that vitamin D helps the body absorb calcium. Inquiry, the ability to ask questions in a disciplined way, has given us knowledge of antibiotics, vaccines, anti-inflammatory me medicine, and, discipl and the discipline need for masks and social distancing. Insights are given to us by God to relieve suffering and help us lead better life. You see, discipline leads the way. Now, stay with me. I told you I was going to meander a bit. In the world of sports, writers will bandy about the term GOAT, G-O-A-T, an acronym for greatest of all time. To be called the GOAT or the greatest of all time an athlete needs to be, at least for me, needs to be not just a great athlete, but a great human being. In my personal opinion, Muhammad Ali deserves the title GOAT. He was a great athlete who spoke out against racial injustice. And, I, and while Ali may have made many people uncomfortable, he was always telling the truth. But now get a bunch of basketball fans together, and many will give the title GOAT to Michael Jordan. A recent documentary about Michael Jordan revealed that Jordan had a work ethic like no one else. You see, if anything, Jordan demonstrated that discipline and focus win the day. Discipline and focus win the day, not just in physical matters, not just in intellectual matters, but in spiritual matters as well. The Bible looks back at us to bless us with discipline and to bless us with joy. I'm currently reading a book written by Pope Francis entitled The Joy of the Gospel. I'm early into this book and have found where Francis points out how the prophet Isaiah speaks of the joy by declaring that all creation shares in the joy of salvation. He goes on to point out that Zechariah tells us that we ought to rejoice greatly. Zephaniah says, God will rejoice over you with gladness. Mary says, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And Jesus says, no one will take your joy from you. Our Bible is a record of our faith. Our Bible is a record of our faith, looks at us offering discipline and offering joy. But discipline. The Rochester based dance troupe, led by choreographer Garth Fagan, has a dance routine named Discipline is Freedom. Discipline is Freedom. Some of us discipline ourselves to take walks every day because of the health benefits of walking. Some have disciplined themselves to eat certain foods because of the health benefits. And others have disciplined themselves not to eat certain food because of the health consequences. At the most basic level, our physical health gives us the freedom to move. In our lesson, Paul invites us to a set of spiritual disciplines. Paul knew that freedom comes from such practices. I'm going to share them with you and then come to a close. But first, I think it's worth sharing with you a line from Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural address, a line that could be suggested as a national discipline. As I share Lincoln's words, I resist 
the temptation to set Lincoln's word in contrast to what others have said. Lincoln told the nation with malice towards none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds. That one could say those were Abraham Lincoln's disciplines. But let me go through our life. Seven, and I'm going to read them all to you right now. Paul says, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the need of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself. Leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, as you look these disciplines over in your spare time, allow them to look back at you. As you have time, meditate on these disciplines. Work them into your life and work them into your walk with God. You see, God rewards discipline. Spiritual discipline is freedom. And I ask now that the church would say, amen. I want to, uh, as always, take this moment and just simply remind uh, everyone that uh, they can check the, uh, the website, um, the pathway, uh, for how to uh, make their offering. Um, there were a few notes that came in uh, this uh, this week. Uh, I just want to remind you that uh, Betty Anderson, a 53-year-old member of our church, passed away this past Sunday. I'm sorry, this past Saturday, August 22nd. There'll be a service in the family for the family in the near future, but please pray for their comfort and their friends as they celebrate their lives. Uh, pray for the Pinkerton family. The Pinkerton family, <clears throat> excuse me, the Pinkerton family lost a child um, named Paulette. Uh, Paulette had um, some health problems, but pl pray for the family's peace and the peace of all that knew her. Um, and I just want to remind you again that uh, prayers for uh, Jan Thorne, Amy Malone's mother. Jan was hospitalized and is being tested uh, for a possible recurring cancer. Um, pray that the test will reveal that a treatment and a problem can be successful. Uh, Carolyn Bartlow, she's uh, having some complications from her uh, uh, surgery. Uh, pray for her comfort. Robert Gratton, a friend of Jan McCandless, and Robert is going undergoing cervical spine surgery. Uh, pray for good results there. And Mary Ellen Collingy, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, had her 94th birthday greeting. Um, you can send her a belated card. Uh, her address is 300, never mind her address. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in this uh, pathway. You know, and as the uh, subject of cancer comes up, um, you know, pray for everyone. Um, I'll just share this experience with you, which has me now writing um, the uh, county health director, but on, um, 
I mean, everybody's got something. I got something that that is being followed. It's not cancer. But I'm coming out of, this is on, I guess it was Wednesday this week. I'm coming out of the Wilmot Center over at the uh, S uh, Strong Hospital. I'm on the second floor. And I see one of my neighbors, who I hadn't seen him for quite some, or one of my former neighbors, who I hadn't seen for quite some time. Um, and my, you know, my neighbor looked at me, I didn't recognize him at first, and he said, there must be something in the water. You know, and then he put, he had cut his hair, so I couldn't see what was going on there, and he's pulled his mask down, and I said, oh, Cordell. And then Cordell said, yeah, it must be something in the water. You know, Marcus has been here too. Now, Marcus is another close friend. And I tell you this story because we all live, now, you know, my situation is indeterminate. It might not be any, it's probably, the doctor said it's probably not going to be anything. But the three of us live within 50 yards of one another. Um, so on my list of things to do this week, I'm going to write, write the county health department and ask them, uh, you know, you got any kind of record for things that happen at the intersection of Genesee Park Boulevard and, um, uh, and Englewood Drive. I mean, we were like, Marcus and Cordell live right next door to one another, and I was one house away from them. So, but anyway, you know, and, and even as I bring this up, um, you know, I recall um, Audrey Lord, who, uh, you know, had, had a struggle with breast cancer. And Audrey Lord was the uh, New York State Poet Laureate, um, at, you know, going back into the 80s. Very talented and gifted writer. But, you know, Audrey Lord, um, you know, she said that instead of some of the ways that we deal with disease, maybe we should just be having a conversation about getting some of the food additives taken out of the, out of the food chain. Uh, but those are the uh, words of Audre Lorde, um, and you know, you know, you can pray on those things and concentrate about that kind of stuff as you will. Um, I need to do two things. One is think, thank Dog Fargo uh, for assisting with the worship this morning. Uh, I notice, I'm noticing that must be a great house household because Dog Fargo has not stopped waving his tail or her tail for the entire time uh, that she's been here. And uh, Karina, I want to thank you for uh, participating this morning uh, in our worship service with the Doves. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, let us take a moment now and uh, turn, our, turn our hearts and minds to God. Eternal God, we bow our heads now, we humble our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, and we direct all that we have towards you. We come to you now, Lord, thankful for all that you do, thankful that you are the Lord who provides us with food, but you are also the Lord that provides us with peace that can pass all understanding. We come to you, dear Lord, saying thankful for the rain that falls and for the food that grows and for the sun that shines. But we also say thank you, dear Lord, that we can come to give us peace. We thank you, dear Lord, for all the many ways in which you have blessed us, the way in which you are blessing us even at this moment as we speak, blessing us in ways known and unknown to us. And we know, dear Lord, that you have so many blessings for us that if we had a thousand tongues, we would not, they would not be adequate to say thank you for this blessing, that blessing, the other blessing. Thank you, dear Lord, for how it is blessing each and every member of this congregation. Thank you, dear Lord, for how you can go out from not just this house of worship, go into the places that are needed. Take your spirit, carry your spirit into the places where food is needed. Carry your spirit into the places where homes are needed. Carry your spirit into the jail cells and into the schoolhouses. Take your spirit there, dear Lord. 
<laughs> excuse me, it continues to be the loving God that has blessed each and every one of us so richly. But even as, dear Lord, we say thank you for the ways in which you have blessed us, we have to say thank you, dear Lord, for your son, Jesus the Christ, who came and walked among us and who taught us how to live, the one who showed us the way of grace, the one who showed us the way of mercy, the one who showed us the way of power and peace. We thank you, dear Lord, for Jesus the Christ. But even as we have all these ways and things to thank you for, we come to you, dear Lord, as a people who need you. We need you, Lord, in our homes. We need you, dear Lord, in the hospital. We need you, Lord, to bless us and prop us up on every bleeding side. We need you, dear Lord, in the life of our community. We need you, dear Lord, in the spirit of those who govern us. We need you, dear Lord, in the spirit and the hearts and minds of those who are called to protect us. So we ask you, dear Lord, that you would just make yourself known to everyone. Make yourself known as a God of peace. Remind us, dear Lord, that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God. That you are one who can make a way out of what no way. Remind us, dear Lord, that you are all and all. So all we really can do, dear God, is say thank you. We say thank you, dear Lord. We place everything in your hands and in your care. And it's in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. The disciples turned to Jesus and they said, Master, how shall we pray? And Jesus turned to his disciples and he said, When you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And the people all said, Amen. Our service ends now with this closing hymn, hymn, hymn number 540, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. <laughs>
light of Christ, and the power and communion of that spirit be with us all. Let us go in peace. And the people all said, Amen. Amen.